lads. We better crack on. Are you coming? You're just in time to watch us break ground. Break what? Break ground. Come on, lads. We have work to do. So, we've set up our site in accordance with our SSRA and it complies with the Red Book and takes into account the needs of everyone likely to interface with our works. You can see the short film we made about this here. So, you'll have to check and recheck your SSRA and any other permits or documents. Carry out a walk of the area, looking for ground scarring or marking. Check for overhead cables and trees. Check safe dig drawings. Find locations of services. Remember, they're not always accurate. Ensure that everyone is aware of the hazards and signs the SSRA. Set out your signs and barriers in accordance with the Red Book and your SSRA. Remember, the planning and design team will have planned for as many eventualities as the paperwork will allow but they don't have your expertise in dealing with situations on the ground. If you find your plans to be incorrect at this stage, then contact your supervisor or authorised team member to seek advice. Always check the plans you're issued with are clear, sufficient and are dated no older than three months from the date you're excavating. On electric plans, if section drawings are mentioned, ensure these are provided and also referred to. So, what now, Mick? You have the documents and markings on the ground, but you still need to use Cat and Jenny before we start excavating. Remember to mark any new findings. Also, mark the utilities 500mm outside of where you dig, so you can still see the markings when you start removing material. Just like you were taught in training. I'll position the Jenny. For the best results, always use the Cat and Jenny together as a combined unit, preferably clipped on in connected mode, and use as many settings as possible to ensure all cables and pipes are located prior to excavating. Ensure you carry out a daily functional check on your Cat and Jenny before it's used. Continue the marking of all the utilities you find at least 500mm outside of where you'll dig, so you can still see the markings when you start removing material. So we don't want to leave a muddy mess on site when we're finished. So we'll put a ground sheet down. It's good to work tidy. Tidy. You'll need some or all of the following in addition to your standard PPE. Mask, eye protection, ear defenders, gloves. And don't forget your flame retarded overall. Prior to using an employer's choice of dust mask, all users are required to have the recommended face fit test for the given dust mask being selected and issued. When working with any form of plant which creates dust, you must wear a suitable face mask. Carry out your face fit test. An inadequate fit and or the presence of facial hair will significantly reduce the protection provided. So if you're working with tarmac or concrete, you will need your petrol or floor saw and water to suppress dust and cool the blade. Anyone using the saw must have the correct training and an abrasive wheel qualification. We don't want any blades flying off at 120 miles per hour. Now that would be a saw point. Now, carefully cut into the surface, taking note of where your markings are, always being aware of traffic and pedestrians. Before we resort to excavating by hand, we always look to see if alternative safe digging methods can be used, such as mowing, directional drilling, vacuum excavator, soil pick or air lance. By far, the majority of excavations are dug by hand, so always follow safe digging methods. Use a shovel to carefully remove the top layer. Other techniques may be required depending on the thickness. All yours, lads. Remember, there is no such thing as a safe excavation, no matter what the depth. You should always be aware of the ground conditions. 
If you're lifting slabs, pavers or kerbs, wherever possible always use mechanical lifting aids and then remove them carefully and safely and store in a secure manner which does not cause an obstruction or a risk. Do not lean them against trees. Don't lean them against private properties, lampposts or walls. Take a photograph of them in situ before lifting them so they can be relayed in the same position. Once this is done, you can start digging into the next layer. Hand digging carefully to prove location of any apparatus identified through CAT and Jenny signals and always, always and excavate to the side of any power source. Use safety shovels wherever possible to reduce the risk of damage and personal injury. Always look out for marker tape that should be laid above the line of existing utilities. The lads have found some here. You must use everything at your disposal to minimise risk. Also, look out for tiles. Change in ground makeup or loose fill around existing apparatus. And remember to always replace when backfilling. Finally, be aware that some utilities may have been positioned near to the surface at a depth a lot less than you were expecting. So take care with digging at all times. When you find any apparatus, make sure you uncover them along the total length within the hole. You only know where it runs when you can see it. Always try to segregate your spoil into the surface layers and the granular material, as this prevents cross-contamination and damage to the existing surface when the spoil is collected. And you may also want to use the material at the backfill layer of the excavation. Make sure you place the excavated spoil into the designated space. Remember to use Cat and Jenny at regular intervals to check for utilities. As per HSG 47 guidance. Your Cat and Jenny won't always tell you if cables and pipes are running together if they're laid on top of each other. Your Cat and Jenny are only a guidance tool. Use your own eyes to validate the signals and if in doubt, stop and risk assess before starting again. Oh, services. No mechanical excavation must be done within 500 millimetres of any utilities. You should never cut across the line of any service unless you have identified and exposed its location. You should hand dig down away from it and work your way towards it, undermining the surface as you go. No mechanical tools, remember. If a power or other cable needs to be broken out of concrete, contact the utilities owner to ensure that it has been isolated before work starts or another safe way of working has been agreed. If an excavator is used near exposed cables, ensure the cable has protection to prevent damage. Never attempt to alter the position of exposed services. Don't use exposed services as a step or handhold. Keep everyone out of the excavation and clear of the bucket. Always dig with caution. Always expect the unexpected. You must treat all services as live despite their condition. It's easy to forget that this is dangerous work when you're doing the job every day. But one wrong move could cause utilities outages and or fines for your company, serious injury and in the worst case, death. If you do find existing damage or damage a utility, it is your job to make the area safe. Prevent access from other people Get yourself and your team to a safe distance until the damage has been repaired or is deemed safe. Report the damage immediately to your supervisor. If it's safe to do so, take photos of any damage you find both close up and long range. You have a duty of care to carry out these actions, but only if it is safe to do so. Assist the supervisor with a damage investigation. Always report any damage, even if there is no immediate danger. Minor damage often escalates at a later date. If you smell gas, warn all others, including people in buildings around the area, and follow any emergency procedures your company may have. Phone this number to report. Ban smoking, naked flames, and all other sources of ignition within a five meter radius of the escape. In the event of a person being injured, Contact your supervisor immediately, and if necessary, call the emergency services. Do not attempt to move an injured person unless they are in a place of danger. In the case of electricity, do not approach under any circumstances unless you are trained to do so. Move everyone else away from the immediate scene. 
First aid must only be administered by trained personnel. Once you've finished breaking ground, take time to reassess your site and make sure it's safe for those working inside and those outside, like drivers and pedestrians. Revisit your SSRA if necessary. Da. So that's it. That's how to break ground out safely. At this point, you are ready to make your repairs or replacements. Thanks for listening. I've been Mick. I've been John. And I've been Jim. Let's get it right first time. Let's do highways the highways. highways.